have beauty retouching. In post, this isn't a makeup tutorial, but it could be. Digital makeup. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to a Kez FX tutorial. I'm Kezzy and I'll be guiding you through this crazy venture. Today I'm going to show you a speedy workflow on how to smooth the person's face without any motion tracking or parenting or rotoscoping because, oh, yeah, we all like to freaking rotoscope. Okay, I secretly do, but I have no life and rotoscoping has a sense of meditation. Moving on. Now I use a third party plugin called Cosmo by Red Giant. It does a basic job of cleaning up wrinkles, acne, and red marks. However, if you have some tough cracks or smudges on the face, it's not really a strong enough concealer. Although, within the plugin's toolbox, it gives us a way to cover up those cracks. Like this one. That's Adam from Adam Sink Domain from Linzer Dinzer TV. It's pretty fantastic if you haven't watched it. Like a little plug in there. Even though Adam's makeup was pretty fantastic during the shoot, the heat of the lights was not being his friend, and we want the best qualities of the art on his face to shine through in the final video piece. So what's the first step? First, I'm going to take this clip of Adam, shake off all the effects, and make a new comp. Alrighty then. Now I am using After Effects Creative Cloud, however to my knowledge this can also be done with earlier versions. So in this comp I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this layer a couple more times. And then, for organization's sake, I'm going to go ahead and rename them so I know which layer has which effect. Okay, first I'm going to call this original. And then we're going to go ahead and call this one blue. And this one called track mat. Of course, you can call these whatever you wish to help keep track of your own project. These are just keywords I use. Now we're gonna go ahead and hide the track mat layer and these audio here, cause we don't really need them. Then for kicks and more organization, let's change the colors. Change that one purple, maybe cyan and yellow. Okay. Now let's take a look at the blur layer and add your normal easy going Gaussian blur. Go to blur and sharpen from the edit menu and Gaussian blur and blind, there it is, Gaussian blur. Now, let me explain what we are doing with this next step. The point of this blur is to help get rid of the crack in Adam's makeup that you see right here. Yet we don't want to push the effect too much to make him look fuzzy. So I'm going to go ahead and start the blur in the effects control panel. I'm going to start the blurriness around five. And we can still see the crack pretty well. And so we're going to go ahead and push it a little more. Eh. It's not as noticeable now. Although this may look a little extreme, our next step will help bring out the important details. So let's go ahead and take a look at our track mat layer again. Let's turn it on. And then add Magic Bullet to Cosmo. Let's go to Effect, Magic Bullet, and Cosmo. Oh, by the way, please note that Red Giant just updated their color suite and got rid of the Magic Bullet title, so the location of this effect may differ from your install. So if your effect menu does not look like this, that means you probably have the newest version, which means you're cooler than me. Dang it. Or I'm just lazy and I haven't upgraded yet. So one day I will be cool too. One day. Moving on. So we have Cosmo in our effects control panel here. And as you can see, Cosmo is already trying to do all the work for us, yet that one crack on Adam's chin is still showing. So instead of using Cosmo as its default settings, let's use it more as a tool. So let's start out with a section called Skin Soften and Fine Tuning here. Within that section, we have a Skin Finder, Skin Tolerance, Show Skin Selection, and Detail. First, let's like take a look at show skin selection and check that checkbox. Instantly, we have some grayage around Adam's lips, glasses, and other details on his face. These are areas that are currently not being affected by the plugin. So this is one of the features that makes this plugin so cool. 
It auto detects a person's facial features, utilizing where the person's face should be sharp and clear and what other parts of the face you want to smooth out and automatically color correct. Of course, each person's face is different. That is why you see a skin finder and a skin tolerance to tweak the detection settings of the skin selection. The difference is slight between the two yet are very useful. Skin Finder right here helps you fine tune the color tone of your subject while Skin Tolerance allows you to widen and shrink the range of color that is identified as skin tones. Like I said, the settings are very slight between the two and when it comes to finding features on the face, I normally just bounce between both options to get the desired effect. So let's try it out. Let us scrub through each option until the lips and the glasses are nearly full of grudge. You don't push so far, the rest of the face starts disappearing. We don't want that. That's bad. So let's go ahead and scrub. And then scrub this one back. That's looking good. Cool. Now, we're gonna go ahead and leave the checkbox on for show skin selection and minimize Cosmo. Next, we're gonna add a hue and saturation. This step will let us to saturate the layer. To find the effect, let's go to the main menu here, go to effect, color correction, and hue and saturation. Now go to the master saturation and put that at negative 100 and minimize the effect. Next, we are going to add a levels effect to crush our blacks. So go to effect, color correction, and levels. Okay. Now, drag the arrows for the input black until the background around Adam's face is purely black. Here we go. And drag the input white, this little arrow here, until his chin and cheeks are mostly blown out. Now, it's okay if the neck or hair still has gray areas. The point of this step is to have a much smoother transition for the track mat, which we just finished creating. Cool. Now, this will allow us to cut out holes of our blur layer. So let's go ahead and select that. And if you don't already have it displayed, go to toggles and mode. Sorry, toggle switches and mode here and switch it until you see the track mat options. Go to the drop down menu on a track mat, and this is where the magic happens. Select the Lumimat track mat, and boom! Selections of Adam's face is cut, leaving sharp and clear picture of his features. Except his hair. Okay, this is the problem. Because his hair is so light and similar to the color of his skin, the track mat we created can't pick out the difference in his features. So for this instance, we're gonna get a bit more creative and add a mask to our track mat. Go ahead and turn the track mat layer back on and select the rectangle tool. And we're going to draw a mask around his hair and around the bridge of his nose. Right now, we are forcing the track mat to ignore this part of Adam's head, but it would even work better if it was on the right layer. Excuse me. Let me go ahead and cut that and paste it on the right layer. And we're gonna put that in subtract mode. Okay. Now, if you leave it as is, obviously we're gonna have a really sharp cut between the mask and the actual track mat. So we're gonna go to the mask feather and feather that out by a lot. So 300. And we're gonna go ahead and lift this up some so we don't have the other mask leaking in and over the hair. The reason we have the feather go so extreme on the track mat is because we want the transition between the mask and the rest of the track mat to be perfectly smooth so you can't even tell the mask was there to begin with. Granted, this trick that we're doing right here would only work if it's like a stationary shot. If your person, your figure is walking around, that might require some motion tracking to keep the layer locked onto your figure 
However, the same principle would apply. So let's go ahead and turn off track map. And there we go, look. Our hair has returned. Granted, I probably made the mask too close to his nose. I'm gonna go ahead and move it up a little bit so we can smooth out his face a little more. The, the edges of the hair can be softer. But we really don't want to lose detail in his hair because, you know, it's fantastic. Keep the, the details in. All right, so there we go. The details have returned. Adam's hair is back and his skin is perfectly smooth. Now for kicks, I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick color grade on the footage. Uh, nothing too fancy, just a quick curves on the on adjustment layer with a hue and saturation, maybe a vignette. Something simple to make the footage pop. I'm not gonna go into excruciating details since it wasn't the main focus of this tutorial. So the end result won't even look like the final video. Although, if you do want more information on how I color graded the final video, let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can bring in another tutorial on how I used Magic Bullet Colorista with the Noiser and other fun plugins. And boom, we have color graded Adam. See, that wasn't so hard. Thanks for watching this tutorial. <laughs> Desi, I don't have the Cosmo whatchamacallit. Can I do this without it? Yeah, third-party plugins are pretty expensive. But hey, they're a great time saver! Eh? Eh? My life sucks. Eh. <laughs> Anywho, the only reason why I don't prefer this next workflow is because it's hard to get the exact coverage of your eyes and mouth. In fact, you can even lose detail. Let me show you what I mean. So, we are back in our project. And I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this comp. I find that it's always a good idea to either copy your old project file or work off a different composition when making revisions. That way, if you are working with a client or a partner that wants to revert to an earlier version, it saves you a lot of pain and effort. Let's go ahead and rename you to And open you up. Okay. Let's just say processing power, I'm gonna go ahead and turn you off, color grade. So let's go to our track mat and turn this layer back on. And we're still gonna be utilizing this mask we put in for his hair, but just so it won't be as distracting, we're gonna go ahead and turn off the mask for now. And cool. Now, we're gonna go to the effects control panel and we're gonna select all of these effects and hit delete. So we're back to our base. Now we're gonna go to the main menu and add a different effect called Threshold. So we're gonna go to Stylize and Threshold. All right, immediately you're probably thinking, whoa, this just skipped tons of steps. Why weren't we using this to begin with? But don't worry, all will be explained in due time. For now, just follow. So for now, we're gonna go ahead and push the level on Threshold until you can get his lips and glasses to be mostly black. I set my level to be around 158. Then we're gonna go ahead and add another Gaussian blur. I'm gonna boost that up between three and five. Good. I mean, right now, it already looks pretty similar to what we had before. Although, notice one strong difference. There's a bright spot on Adam's lips right here. This means once we place this layer back in as a luma mat, this area will still be blurred. It's true we could have crushed the level on threshold a little more, but if we did that, we start losing more detail. And even so, we can't get the lips to completely go black. However, I'm gonna go ahead and undo this. Back to 158. And back on subtract. And then go ahead and turn this layer off. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn the grade back on in the vignette. Okay. 
it still does a pretty good job within After Effects. Although, just for comparison's sake, I'm going to go ahead and put this side by side with the other comp. And you can see, just having a two-up display of both of these compositions, you can see that the one on the left, which has the Cosmo, the original workflow, you still have detail within the lips and some of the makeup detail on the side of his face and a little bit on the nostril area here. This is why I prefer working with Cosmo instead of your basic version of Threshold. Cosmo gives you more bang for your buck. However, if you're just starting out and you just want to make a slight push with your skin smoothing, Threshold does a pretty good job. It really just depends on what you're looking for and what you're trying to achieve. Do you want the person's face to be perfectly smooth while the other features to be perfectly sharp? Or do you not mind the blend between the two? In reality, both techniques work pretty well. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope it helps you with your projects. If you create anything that utilizes either workflow, send me a link. I would love to see your work. I also want to thank Country Mary for helping me shoot this part of the video. If you want to see more of her work, check out her own work over here. It's pretty fun, pretty fancy. Click it. Also, if you enjoyed this tutorial and you want to see more as well as other videos, hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoyed it and it really helped you out, hit that like button. Well, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Until next time.